Hello Indie Game Fan, I expected April to be fantastic for indie games and it did not disappoint, but did have some very interesting and atypical titles, such as Crab Champions, one that spawned out of the Crab Rave meme, but somehow it's excellent and it's not just a meme game. In fact, this is from the same person that made the song 5 years ago, taking their time and, I'm assuming, getting the right people to help. With this roguelite 3D platformer where you play as a crab with a gun, it's fast, frantic and filled with explosions, just like how a great roguelite should be. This next title is a little controversial, since even I dismissed it as Stone Keeper but rotated 90 degrees, so while War World isn't exactly the most original of games, I suppose the lesson here is that nothing is ever truly original, where execution is what matters. In concept, this is similar, we are digging into the side of the wall to get resources for upgrades, periodically returning to your robo spider to fight off waves of enemies. But the various upgrades and quality of life improvements, as compared to Dome Keeper, has led to this game getting its own fans. Also of note is the price of this game, which is $5, being very affordable for a great experience. War that was promised, lost to the ages. Chosen vessel, accept your fate. After Image was one of my most anticipated Metroidvanias of the year, and I'm happy to report that it does not disappoint. While well, a little bit generic with the fantasy theme, setting and story, if you're looking for an action-packed title with all of the trappings of a good one of these, you cannot go wrong with this game. The children of God, returning to their origins. In a way, this is comfort food metroidvania, being solid all around, making it a no-brainer if you love your backtracking exploration and challenging bosses. I'm also happy to report that this monster taming RPG is pretty good, where instead of capturing monsters like in Pokemon, Cassette Beasts instead has you transforming into them, even being able to fuse together to create a whole bunch of awesome variants. Let's go. As such, it feels much more like a classic turn-based JRPG, but with the added variety and fun of discovering new monsters. The story is surprisingly engaging as well, with a little bit of a darker theme, so if you love the monster tamer like me, be sure to check this out. Another pleasant surprise for the month is Neon Echo, a 2.5D roguelite platformer with a tech and anime style dropping out of nowhere from a Chinese developer. This is an action-packed title with a musical or rhythm element to it where you can attack on the beat for additional skills and damage. In line with the theme, it is set in a world corrupted by noise, where those who explore it become manic and can even become monsters, so it is up to our heroes to restore the peace. The current early access version has three playable characters which are distinct, but its English language translation is not the best at the moment, so keep an eye on this for now to see if it gets any better. A 
farming title of interest is Roots of Pacha, one that stands out due to its prehistoric setting. We are leading a tribe of early humans as they progress through the ages. As such, while there is still farming and raising animals, how you go about it is quite different since there isn't a general store to purchase seeds from, where the novelty factor certainly adds to its charm. Also nice is that this is not in early access, where the developers plan to support this with new content just like Stardew Valley. Building off the success of Curse of the Dead Gods, developer Pastec Games made another action roguelite that has a similar visual style in Raven's Watch, changing up the theme where you play as heroes from myths and fables instead. You are battling against the nightmare who is corrupting the world, so again, not the most original of ideas, but that's not the point in roguelites, with more of a focus on combat and action which is great. The different playstyles and skills of each character are a joy to experiment with, but do note that it is in early access so content is limited, but has a great foundation to build on. Who am I? Oh my goodness, I think that the developer of this is onto something pretty special here in Shadows of Doubt, a first-person voxel detective immersive sim title where you have free reign of the sandbox as you investigate procedurally generated murders. The stories that have come out of this from how people found the murderer are pretty exciting, and while it is still in early access, has quite a bit of content, so I think it's worth checking out right now and also to keep an eye on in the months to come. Technically, this awesome title is from an independent developer, but Chiru Games has grown tremendously since its early days and can be seen as a mid-sized developer now. So War Tales comes with a little bit of an asterisk, but it does not undermine how awesome it is. It's an open world RPG where you lead a band of mercenaries on a quest for fame and fortune, taking on various contracts and finding a way to survive in the world. The tactical turn-based combat is great, but the brutal medieval world and locations are fantastic places to explore. People have spent easily 60 plus hours with this game with more to come, having some resemblance to Battle Brothers but 3D and with smaller parties, and it's easily one of the best games of the year. This game has one of the best art styles that I've seen in a long time, reminding me of one of my personal favourites in Adventure Time, where the tactical and very challenging nature of this game has me hooked, and yes, while it isn't perfect due to balancing and RNG, I do think that there's something special to World Frost and hope to see it get better post-launch, but if you want an in-depth breakdown of its success, it is answered here in this video.